woman. And this is a bridge. And despite our vast differences, we are very much in love. And our love in itself is no different from any other love that exists between two beings. One of the most difficult parts of being in love with a public object is that he and I can never be truly intimate. Whereas objects I've loved in the past, that's never been an issue. I feel very, very blessed to have a piece of my sweet Golden Gate Bridge. And I just hope that when I make love with this piece of him, that he can sense and feel how much I really, really love him. Because I am in love with the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. And the Golden Gate Bridge is very much in love with me. Erica La Torifel, known to her friends as Naisho, is one of just 40 people in the world who call themselves objectum sexuals, people who have loving relationships with objects. Naisho has many lovers. Her most famous ones these days are the Berlin Wall and the Eiffel Tower. Her love for objects is behind her considerable athletic success. She's a world-class archer thanks to her long-term relationship with a bow. She's just not wanting to come out here. This bow is uh, Tenchan. And it was indeed the first bow I ever fell in love with. Uh, he belonged to a guy that I was attempting to have a relationship with. And the sad part is he broke up with me because I loved his bow more than I... I loved his bow more than him and uh, he was rather offended. When, when you say you date these guys, does it mean you do have sex with them? Oh, no. No, we never get to that point. Oftentimes they, they always said, I'll be the guy that will make her change her mind. And I never liked that attitude, so... I mean, I didn't date a whole lot of guys, but the ones that I did um, didn't work out simply because of the, uh, the sex part. The bow, called Lance, propelled her to become a world champion gold medalist and a record breaker. But she's been out of love with him for a couple of years now. This national championship is the first one since their relationship cooled. The competition brings back good memories. Lance knows he's good looking. <laughs> and uh, initially, I was attracted to him because of his looks. <laughs> We've had a pretty hot and heavy relationship for quite some time. But when we got together out there on the archery field, I realized it was more than just uh, uh, his aesthetic appeal to me. Everyone knew that I was an archer, knew that I loved my bow, but they didn't realize I loved my bow. <laughs> you know, Lance and I, we were, we were such a great team because we had that connection on every single level. I mean, I'd almost swear that my blood just flowed from my arm and went right into him. I just, you know, felt like the molecules in him were flowing back into my arm. I, I, I used to feel so connected with him. Is it mechanically, is it similar to a woman having sex with a man? I would say yes. I would say that the, uh, you know, I mean, orgasm, all that is involved foreplay, afterplay, all of that. And I think the emotional aspect of it is probably similar. I would imagine, or I would hope so, because I'd say the sex is really great for me, so if everyone else is having that kind of sex, I think it's wonderful. The world should have more of that. <laughs> okay, 276. Have all the shots been clean, or many of them been line breakers? Anthony is her coach, and a friend who's known her for years. At first, I thought it was a little strange, because she would always be with her bow. And then one, one time, I, re I recall, she told me that she slept with Lance. And my first reaction was that, uh, this is a little weird. But having known her for a couple of years, and having 
as much respect for her, uh, both as an athlete and as a person, uh, I said, well, maybe, you know, I should listen a little more closely to what this is all about. But things are different now. Working with an ex is never easy. Nisha no longer feels at one with her bow. That last one was? You pulled it. The last one you pulled I, I it. I couldn't keep my the sight on. Really? Well. Nisha has come third in her category. A defeat for the former world champion. She doesn't even want to collect her trophy. You know, I have very little pride right now when it comes to my archery. And I know I'm a good shooter. All right, well, that's why you should go up and get your award. But please don't ask me to do this. And please don't be disappointed that I don't do it. But I just, I am on the verge of having an absolute just meltdown. And I don't think I can put myself in that position. This is your third place trophy. Thank you. I appreciate you collecting it for me. Congratulations. Thank you, Anthony. You did great. You did great. Mm -hmm. I know I've disappointed a lot of people. I know I've disappointed myself, but I'm trying to keep alive something that I'm not in love with anymore. And now I've put myself in an extremely complex situation because my heart decided it, it wanted to fall in love with something that's almost completely out of my reach. A year ago, at a private ceremony, she married the Eiffel Tower, pleading eternal love to the iconic structure. Since then, she's been losing interest in her archery career. Who are the objectum sexuals? Why are their passions so intense? And why do they prefer the coldness of concrete to the warmth of a human body? Objectum sexuals, the US people, fall in love with objects, not human beings. They also give them names, depending on their gender. Why are some of the objects a he and some are a she? Well, gender doesn't actually, you know, the object, obviously you can't lift up a leg on the Eiffel Tower and see whether she's male or female, but I think really what it boils down to is we can't call the object an it because in the language that we speak, referring to something as an it, instantly means it's inanimate. I just kind of get a sense of whether the object is male or female. It's you know, Eiffel Tower, she's the Grand Madame of Paris. I mean, I didn't determine her gender, she did, obviously. I mean, I just want to be with her. Were you guys like catch me having sex with the Eiffel Tower? It'd be great. <laughs> Sweden was the birthplace of objectum sexuality. Eorita coined the term when she married the Berlin Wall in the 70s. She changed her name to Frau Berlena Mauer, Mrs. Wall. Did you have a chance to have a sexual encounter with the wall at that time? You made love, yeah. Yes. You made love? Yes. Yeah? Yes, and that's private. And that was good? Yes. It was a good experience? Yes, it was good. <laughs> it was good with that one too. Yeah? Yes. Hey, Rita used to be in a loving relationship with a guillotine. And the head, head ache is over. Got out. These days, she lives on her own with nine cats in a large house in northern Sweden. She doesn't travel anymore, but instead has created a model museum dedicated to her lovers on the ground floor. Eorita's father, who was a model maker, taught her how to build them. Have you had any relationships with people at all in your life? No. 